Charles Daring, and with a little prodding from some friends of mine, uh, I've decided to start a series uh, about the basics of scroll sawing from the very beginning on up to very, very detailed projects. But uh, I had initially planned on starting with the anatomy of the scroll saw and building up from there, but with the project I just finished, this being it, I came up with a tip while I was working on this that I could teach and I figured since I already recorded I'll start with that and you'll see that after this little announcement. Uh, but the next video in the series will be the anatomy of a scroll saw as I just said and we'll build up from there but a lot of this is going to depend on questions from y'all. There's nothing, no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to learning. We've all started somewhere. We had to ask people questions or read about it on the internet and uh, hopefully this video series will help you. So feel free to leave me a comment, email me privately, whatever you, you choose and uh, I will try to cover all of them. In the comment section I may just uh, acknowledge your comment rather than answer it in the comment in case I can make a video out of it rather than just answering it in the comments. But uh, I think I can teach but only to a degree because it's been so long since I was a beginner so I'm not sure I'll I'll think of everything that people would want to know. So hopefully with feedback from y'all and uh, and more then maybe we can make something out of this. But I hope, hope I'm able to help. I only use spiral blades. But maybe you'll get to witness me using a flat blade at some point. But that will be laughable. So I can't teach a whole lot when it comes to flat blades. But I'll try to lead you to people who can. But I hope you'll tune in and stay tuned for the tip I just mentioned about this one. Okay, let's say you want to make a, a backer for this, but you don't want it to be rectangular. Uh, this is my most recent project uh, before the series began. Um, but a lot of times when somebody makes a backer the shape of their subject, they tend to flush the edge of the backer with the subject. And to me, on a white wall or a light colored wall, it will kind of, the edges will kind of get lost so I came up with a way that I use to get a very consistent border uh, around the subject in order to paint it black and it sticks out slightly past the edges of the subject and I'm going to show you how I do that and it's pretty darn easy you just get a washer of any kind this one happens to be plastic it's the only one I could find but the thing you want to concentrate on is the thickness you want between the subject and the edge of the backer is determined by the distance between the hole and the edge of the washer or anything you can find to use but I use washers because they're plentiful but this right here is the thickness or the width that the backer will extend past the subject and let me turn off the camera and zoom it in a little closer and I only have to do a section of it to show you and then I'll show you the completed backer Okay, I've chosen this area for two reasons because the washer, well I'll show you, <laughs> the washer will not go through that area and you don't want any part of it to flex, but it, you still have enough of an opening to fit that washer in there in order to have a space in, in the backer. And you'll see that when I get through tracing it all, but the other reason I wanted to show you is for pieces like this that are, that are flexible. You know, this pretty darn flexible and all you have to do there so I'll start here in order to show you but all you have to do there is is hold the flexible piece down and that's what I'll do so the rest of it you can just be watching I'm holding the flexible part as well as well as the sturdy part next to it and as I move up I'm gonna have to hold this too because due to the intricacy of this fretwork this whole thing's gonna want to wiggle back and forth but more so this this drop you just hold your pen at the edge and just let the washer determine where your your boundaries are and you you go you notice as I came around here I went around the diameter of the washer in order to have the radius and the so the circle of the of the washer will determine. Now it moved a tiny bit so I'm going to correct that line because I was too busy talking and not holding it down. 
Now this part will be cut out of the backer. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a little bit more that you can see around here in order to give you a more of an idea. I'll zoom out slightly. Hopefully you'll still be able to see this on the camera because I can't really tell. But again, since we're dealing with this really flexible area, I'm going to have to hold, hold it again. And hopefully I can do this without getting in the way. I'm lightly placing that washer up against it and holding it, holding it down pretty pretty firmly, but I don't want to get in the way of the, where the washer is going to go. If I do, it's okay because you paint the backer black and it won't, it won't show if you make any squiggly lines. Again, I'm using the radius or the diameter, whatever the heck you call it, of the washer to start. And yes, my hand will be in the way for part of it. Now I'm about to have to move my hand because I don't want this area to flex. I'm holding down firmly. I don't want to move my hand too much because if this moves, then I got to start all over in determining where. And I'm just using fingers closest to the edges in order to stabilize the piece. Now you may have an easier way of doing this. It's just the way I, I, I figured out to do it. I don't know that anybody else does this, but I've always thought... I, I also don't know that there's a whole lot of people that will do freestanding pieces like this, so to speak. Uh, but because I do and I don't like the way the edges get lost. Let me zoom out again so you can watch me finish this. I forgot what I was talking about. I don't like it when the edges get lost on a... Excuse the shaking of the camera. I don't like it when the edges get lost on the on a white wall or a white colored wall. So that's why I make the backer go back. But you'll notice the thickness from the edge of the piece to that is the distance from the hole to the outside of the washer and that's the premise of the whole deal to have a consistent shape border. You could easily do this by eye or by hand just by tracing the piece of your backing and you'll notice again there I use the uh, diameter of the washer to determine the radius of going around. It won't be the exact shape of your subject because it's kind of a rounded version. Now I'm too busy doing this to look up at the camera and see if I'm still in a frame, but I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing while we're sitting here. And if you get to a flexible piece, just be more gentle with your, with your washer. Now, if you make any mistakes, it's not detrimental to your project because the main focus is obviously the piece you're working on and you may be wondering why I'm not holding the piece up against the edges like I just talked about it's because I trust that they're not going to flex but they're about to so I'm going to move over and move the camera again I apologize for that but I want to be consistent here This, this area right here is kind of flexible because of how intricate it's done. So I'm going to start doing that. And i got to get on the other side of the camera in order to do that. At the end of this video, you'll see when the backer's painted black and it's cut out, you will see I don't have any light walls in here because they're all OSB or fiberboard, whatever you choose to call it. But I don't want to drag it inside just to hold it up against a white wall. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not in the way here. No, I guess I'm not. I could be though. So, and you only have to do this on the outer, outer area of this unless you have an area that's meant to be see-through like between the body and the arm, but which is it's not a good example for me to bring up because it's not showing on this piece. But the only area I saw an opening for was over there by the hatchet. And if you didn't see the video where this was made, I'm not satanic or anything, or, nor is the group, but uh, this is a character named Eddie for the 
the group Iron Maiden. And this was from their album cover called Killers. And I know I'm out of frame right now, but I think y'all have gotten the idea right now. I'm just going to go ahead and continue the line. And I this is an example, even if it's not flexible, this is an example of why you want to hold your piece sometimes. Because as you can see, it went up under here. Well, maybe you can't see because I didn't turn the camera. It went up under there, but that's not the end of the world. All I gotta do is pull it back out, hold it down, and just redraw that line. Again, having the pen at the, the edge of the washer there. And that's really the only thing that ever happens besides flexible pieces moving, is sometimes you... the washer will go up under the piece. But again, once you've cut it out and painted it, nobody will know. Now this isn't any kind of high tech or holy moly idea, I just think it's a very reliable way to uh, to do it. So let me move the piece out of the way and you'll see the shape of the backer. Very, very, very simple. Let me make sure it's in camera. No, it's not, of course. Hopefully you can see that because it's traced in pen. If not, this whole lesson will have been wasted. That's zoomed out as far as I can go, but hopefully you can see the the tracing I did. And all I'm going to do, the only inside cut will be this. The rest of it, I'll just cut the perimeter of it out and paint it black, and I'll show you that here shortly. <laughs> 